<clears throat> so here we are again. It feels weird not doing it um, in my chair at, at Bristol. I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to do this. Out of my comfort zone. Echo. Echo. Right, let's crack on. So we're back with another Steve's shoe review, and if you don't know what this is, basically it's where I spend my hard-earned money, test out some freestyle shoes, go into scrutinising detail on them, and. Um, saves you guys having to do that yourselves I guess. So for the past god knows how many months I've been using the 4 Freestyle Explore 3s. Great shoe, very very capable and competent shoe. You can check out my review on them, it will be somewhere. But they're not perfect. The most popular on the Freestyle market at the moment. But for me they're not perfect and I want to try some other shoes. With that being said, I have just gone and got myself a pair of da -da -da -da, the Azen 1 freestyle shoe. I'll be honest with you, I really don't know what to expect out of this shoe. I think this video is going to be pretty much, as much as possible, a direct comparison between the two. Once again, I would just like to reiterate that absolutely nothing I'm saying is paid or endorsed in any way. Nothing but the raw, cold, hard truth, in my opinion, and I will not hold back. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start off talking about the design of the shoe. I think that's the obvious place to start. And with this one, Eh, I know what you're thinking. I, I know what you're thinking. It's not the best looking shoe. I'm just going to be honest about that. What I am going to say, for all the wonderful colour technology that a Canon camera has, having them here in my hands, these are not white. They are not quite white. Don't think I've inherited 20% of my dad's colour blindness yet. I said the same thing about the Explore ones when they came out, how they were white. It, they, they're white but they had a very uh, subtle blue tint to them. It's the same kind of situation with these, um, except it's a bit more yellow. If anything, they look more like the kind of colour of someone's teeth who has been smoking every now and again. Holding the shoes in my hand, these are extremely light. So on the front, we have here a huge, huge positive in my opinion. Ooh, whoop de doo stripes. So this, having this on the toe bed is something that I was really, really crying out for on the Explore um, 3s because you would sometimes get a little bit of inconsistency in the kind of touch and the kind of connection that you were having with the football for certain tricks. I'm hoping this will consistify things a little bit better. A variety of materials in play here, but predominantly on the upper, we have got, we've got mesh, the default option in a freestyle shoe, dare I say. I love the laces. The laces are really simple. They're really thin. Yeah, I like the laces. Oh, I've just realized I've still got, <laughs> still got these in them. Uh, I've noticed we do have this kind of, this thing, uh, which you know comes up a little bit high up the ankle. I'm hoping that that won't be too intrusive and get in the way of any freestyle. Now the sole of the shoe is kind of interesting. There's a lot going on with it. It's kind of void of like the zigzag herringbone pattern and all the other kind of ones which have, we've seen uh, on freestyle shoes over the years. The shape of the sole is interesting. If I remember rightly, this kind of shape and thickness and everything, this is carbon copy to me of the Puma Brazils. And on the side here, we have the logo and I feel bad for saying this because it's like Azen's a great guy and it's his logo and everything, but I I just don't get it. I just don't get the logo. And on the shoe, it sticks out like a, a sore thumb a bit. And then inside the shoe, this is padded out very heavily. As you can see, my size 41 little feet. On the sole and around the inside and around the back and everything, loads around the back actually. The shoe is more designed at indoor use, obviously. Yeah, overall, looks-wise, the shoes, they kind of leave a little bit to be desired. Gonna be honest, I bought these more to get the most out of them. Performance-wise, that is my priority, and if I look a little bit silly while freestyling, I mean, I already do that anyway, so. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that needs to be covered about these shoes at face value for now. I'm obviously gonna go and test them. Yeah, I, I like to give them at least kind of like a month of testing, but, you know, I'm a slow editor as well. Catch you in a bit. Three weeks later. Oh, ow. Hello. <sighs> Only me again. Azen 1 freestyle shoe. For freestyle, explore three. Okay, where to start? It's probably a little bit sooner than what I usually would do for a shoe review, but I honestly feel like I've been able to draw a very accurate opinion 
and conclusion on these shoes already. Okay, so from the start then, you put the shoes on the feet, how do they feel? These shoes were comfortable. In my own personal opinion, these shoes were more comfortable than the full freestyle shoes. I think the reason I'm saying that is because there's a lot more padding uh, inside the shoe. Structurally as well, I still can't say that word. Structurally, there's a lot more to these shoes than the much more kind of um, bare, <laughs> design that is the four freestyle shoes whether that's explored one two three they've always been quite a flimsy shoe like there's really not a lot to them with these ones by the way the shoe is put together there's a bit more to it but it's not super rigid and uncomfortable in any way in terms of the fit though for me it's still not perfect but i blame my genetics of having ridiculously narrow ankles if you're going to get these shoes then go for exactly the same size as you would wear um, for freestyle shoes. One thing I would say though is it's a little bit harder to um, tighten the shoes up fully around the ankle. Okay, so if we're keeping score, I'm gonna say already it's 1-0 to the Asian freestyle shoes on uh, comfort. Fit is no different. In terms of uh, weight, that's become a very important thing for us freestylers, especially when the tricks get more complex, difficult, and speed dependent. I purposefully did not weigh these shoes. Didn't want to see that number and have any kind of um, placebo effect in terms of like how they actually felt on my feet or comparing them to the four freestyle shoes. And honestly, these feel super lightweight. I wouldn't say they feel any lighter or heavier than the four freestyle. You start trying to do some tricks with them. Yeah, obviously it takes some adjusting. I spoke to Azen and he told me that it would take about, usually takes about a week to break into these shoes. Didn't take me as long as that. It took me three days, three sessions, which is for me, is kind of standard. I, I refer to that as like the three days of hell. But day number two, session number two, big tricks and everything. I was quite confident at how quickly I was adapting to these shoes. And adaptation is gonna be the key word here. If you go from the four freestyle shoe kind of touch to this shoe's kind of touch, they are very different. I'm not gonna lie to you. Best way for me to describe the touch of this shoe, I, I, I didn't expect it to be as much as this, but it was. The touch of it is closer to a futsal type shoe, like an indoor football court kind of shoe than it is like a casual mesh Puma Archive light or anything like that. It's much further down that end of the spectrum. Now, if you're like me, you'll love that. Things like Nike Elastico Finale 2 and Adidas X shoes, that for me is the best touch I've ever had um, for lowers in a freestyle shoe, it really, really is. I was excited utilizing that feel once again. So let me talk about the positives first. That touch, that grip, that connection, it restored um, a lot of confidence in just things like my half around the world. It was like next to no like slip or anything. So obviously the actual juggling with these shoes, very, very different. Once you get over that barrier, and it, it was a barrier, but once you get over that barrier, you're flying. Honestly, I was, connecting with the ball in such a way that I felt if I was, if I'm going to continue like this, I think three revs are going to be easier in these shoes. And I'm not even someone who does um, like loads of three revs or anything. How do I describe it? The touch I was getting from them was already creating the image in my head of how it would pan out. Things like Scala, Palais Out, Shimo, um, Palais In, all of the touch for it was just because I could, I could see, I could visualize it. I know it sounds crazy, but it just starts to connect a few dots in your head. I hope that makes sense. But it won't be for everyone because I understand that if you are really, really used to this touch, then going to this touch is a massive shakeup. One kind of uh, small kind of sector that really wasn't as good. What I like to call the dead touch, like alternative Magellan, for example, hitting the ball, um, kind of dead center, very little spin. Touch for that one, I, I will admit, really different and hard to get used to. The really, really nice thing about these shoes, which is a big win over the four freestyle, is the fact that um, as you use the four freestyle, as, as time elapses, the quality of the touch deteriorates. It happens on a small scale. The kind of connection that you're making with the ball um, two months after when you first get them out the box and whack them on your feet, it's nowhere near like 
what they were at the start. Whereas with these, I think you get the same touch, the same kind of oomph from the start and two months down the line and beyond. Blocks and slaps were not impossible by any means, but just noticeably perhaps not as good. It might have something to do with the fact I wasn't using the laces with grip. Maybe that's finally shown me like it's worth. Maybe to do more with like the shape of the shoe. For slaps, I'm typically touching the ball a lot higher up the shoe, like more where the laces are and everything. Um, with, with these shoes, it feels like you're able to press against the ball with your foot your actual foot <laughs> a lot more. So maybe that's why it, those might have been a little bit more favorable for that kind of trick. So yeah, overall, um, in terms of lowers, I think overall I have to give it to the Azen 1 effect. I feel, I feel like the potential, like the ceiling, is just a bit better with these shoes. There's just a bit more oomph to them. They're really good. Next, I want to talk about durability. These shoes absolutely destroy these shoes when it comes to durability. I only use these for what is like two or three weeks or whatever, but there's, there's signs of wear and tear is minimal. See, they get a bit dirty, but you can clean these shoes a hell of a lot easier than you can on these. These cannot survive the washing machine or anything. Get dirty in one session and then that's it. That's their fate. Okay, remember, mesh is not a material. Mesh is a pattern. These strips on the front are made of rubber or whatever and you can wash them no problem. With like a small damp cloth, you can improve their looks if you care about that. This is what the bottom's looking like. Grip-wise on the bottom, I should say, it's even though it, had, it has quite a very different design, to that of the 4 freestyle. Now, same really in terms of the grip on the bottom. Looking at this shoe and I'm thinking, I should get at least like six months out of this shoe. Quite a bold prediction, I know. And obviously, I don't know if that will be the case if you used it like uh, outdoor on like rougher surfaces. So durability, early days, I know, but this one is gonna win that category as well. Sole variations, no issues in terms of sole variations. Yeah, all good for those kind of tricks as well. <sighs> so yeah, at this point you might be thinking, wow, these shoes are the best freestyle shoe ever. <laughs> well, I hit a massive wall with these shoes. This was something that I just, I just, I've really, really struggled with and I really tried to overcome it. I just couldn't. And that is sit. Yeah, of all things, of all things, I can't believe them. Uh, my sits, they're nothing special or anything, but I put a lot of time and effort into improving them and getting them better than what they were. So then to suddenly come to using these shoes and them literally going back to like square one, baffling and frustrating. The worst part is, is I don't even know why sits were so difficult in these shoes. Getting used to juggling, you know, um, in these shoes stood upright, that's fine. You can do that, no problem. Doing it sat down, just not straightforward at all. Big chasm of difference between doing lowers in these shoes and doing sits in these shoes. Cool. I haven't really got any footage to show because it's just me scurrying around on the floor, losing control of the ball and losing my temper every two seconds. I found it nigh impossible to set myself up for tricks like Demetto and Reverse Demetto. I personally don't really like juggling, sat down with the futsal type shoes, even, even Puma Brazils. Puma Archive Lights, Puma Glide Lights, whatever. Really, really prefer doing sits in those kind of shoes. I don't know why. I've done, I've done shows and stuff in these shoes, some quite big shows as well. And, and like, when I went down to the sits, I was just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the price. So they're priced the same and they're both coming from Norway and everything. I don't know if it's like luck of the draw, but I've had customs charges with, with, with the four freestyles before. Okay, so to draw some kind of conclusion then overall on the shoes, I think that when you look at the bigger picture, you know, for as many categories and factors that we like to think about in a freestyle shoe, I think the Azen one wins at more of them, okay? Then it's just a matter of which ones do you care about the most? I'm not sure if I'm going to continue using these shoes, and that is honestly because of the sits thing. You know, I like to be able to have the feel that I can do everything. I don't think that you should have to trade off massively on certain categories. But again, you know, freestyle shoes are relative to the perspective 
of the user. So yeah, I think some of the categories that this shoe is better at are comfort, durability, and lowers. I would honestly say, if you're someone who's using a futsal shoe currently for freestyle, and you like your lowers and everything, then I would say go out and give this a go. I think you could really like it. I think it's lightweight, and it's got a better sole than the futsal type shoes. The futsal type shoes, the sole is just a bit too narrow. So sole variations and everything's a bit harder. It, it all just comes back to personal preference. Overall, uh, I'm gonna give them the shoes up. You know, would recommend them. They're worth a pop, certainly when you consider that they are the same price as the four freestyle shoe. So I've been very impressed with them. <sighs> right, I think that's enough of me talking then. So I hope you guys have found this one useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow, blah, blah, blah. I'll catch you in the near future. Skadoosh.